Hello, friends, comrades, classmates. Today, I am going to be doing a film analysis of my favorite movie, The Virgin Suicides, which happens to be created by, well, adapted into a film by my favorite director, Sofia Coppola. If the last name sounds familiar, it's because she's the daughter of the very famous Frank Coppola. She's the better Coppola, in my opinion. This was originally a book, never read it. Don't plan on it. The movie is amazing. Okay, so a little caveat before we get into this for anyone who does care. This movie has been out for like 20 years, but there will be spoilers in here. Um, the title of the film is literally a spoiler. So like it says here, you can't get mad at me for not getting it until now. They die. That's the spoiler. All right, so brief little synopsis on the movie. If you're wondering, oh my god, I haven't seen it. What happens, Mrs. Movie God? I'm Mrs. Movie God. Do not worry, I will tell you. So this is a story of the five, oh, sorry, um, of the five doomed Lisbon sisters and the mysterious recounting of their story, um, of their story which occurred 20 years earlier. So basically, we're watching this movie and it's told from the point of view of a couple neighborhood boys who basically worshiped th them from afar almost entirely they never even interacted with them they didn't know these girls but we are learning about them through their point of view a little ironic these girls are raised overly devout catholics and have an extremely sheltered upbringing their mom's a bit of a hypochondriac actually in a huge hypochondriac um and they she doesn't even let them go in cars so yeah it's it's a very very tough um home to be in basically through the analysis of this movie i am going to be explaining and showing um its portrayal of the enigma and also the mystification of the perceived dual self. So I know that's a bit wordy, but I'm going to explain what this perceived dual self is. So in this movie, each of these girls, or the girls as a whole, I guess we could see, because they are looked at as a unit, the mysterious Lisbon girls, um, they have their real self and the male identified self, which is often, often objectified and romanticized. So this is the self that the males who are perceiving them create and this is also the self that we view almost in through the almost throughout the entire movie because that's what we're restricted to which is a shame so obviously our narrators our main narrator is a man who's a much older but he's telling it from his point of view as a kid but it's a bunch of neighborhood boys who kind of gather together and make these it's all a bunch of speculation really the movie is just speculation no one really knows what goes inside these troubled girls minds this movie is gorgeous and that's why i love this movie so much it has such an airy score and bright visuals however big however the plot is heart-wrenching five girls end up taking their lives <laughs> before they turn 18. it's not funny i didn't mean to laugh but it's just like crazy the irony. So, let's start. I want to start by talking about the opening scene. Basically, our first thing, first visuals we see are a B-roll of a beautiful, sunny, um, suburban town. It's summer. Um, people are walking their dog, uh, watering their lawn. It's beautiful. And then quick, abrupt cut to inside the Lisbon home. We see the change from these warm visuals to cold and blue visuals we see cecilia the youngest um of the lisbon sisters and we see the caption here cecilia was the first to go so we are first introduced to the movie by seeing cecilia's first suicide attempt she didn't actually end up successfully taking her life but this starts the mysticism of the whole movie we learn everyone in the neighborhood learns that this young lisbon girl who's never allowed to leave her home tries to kill herself Okay, very sad. But then, abrupt cut, after we, after we learn that she tries to kill herself, then we're introduced to all of the girls from the boys. And here's what it looks like. Watch it first, and then I'll talk about it. Oh my god, there's an ad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. Cecilia, the youngest, was 13. And Lux was 14. Bonnie was 15. Mary was 16. And Therese was 17. Okay, so we just learned that Cecilia, the youngest, the 13-year-old, just tried to kill herself. But then we get this beautiful introduction with bubble letters and a little star for the eye. It's it's just, it feels a little inappropriate when you watch it. Because you're like shocked seeing such a young girl t trying such a such an insane and permanent thing. Like taking her life. And then quick cut to how the boys see them. Which is really just in a childish light in my opinion. Now moving on. Not, I don't need to see that again. Okay, next, as we move on later into the story, um, we learn about how the boys collect these artifacts of the girls over time, whether it be through uh, going in the house themselves, if they met the girls, but also the diary, which is what we're going to be talking about, was stolen from a plumber's assistant who passed it from boy to boy to boy to boy, finally to these couple of boys and they're going to start reading Cecilia's diary and listen to this excerpt. Google oh my God. newest endeavor is a chip implanted into couples' brains to merge their thoughts. Whoa. I don't know what I want, but I know I don't want you. All right. I okay. Elm trees. How many pages can you write about dying trees? Here, something about Dominic. Palazzolo jumped off the roof today over that rich bitch porter. How stupid can you be? Today we went out on the boat. It was pretty cold. We saw a couple of whales. Lux leaned over and stroked the whale. I didn't think they would sink so much. It's the kelp in their bay baleens rotting. I hope we can go again sometime. Ten little histories yeah. that Lux lost it over Kevin Haynes. Um, the garbage man. The garbage man. Lux lost it over Kevin Haynes, the garbage man. She'd wake up at five in the morning and hang out casually on the front steps, like it wasn't completely obvious. She wrote his name and marker on all her bras and underwear, and Mom found them and bleached out all the Kevins. Lux was crying on her bed all day. Okay, so I think we can all agree that was like gorgeous beautiful cinematography like even this thumbnail here with her in the luau gar garb i think that's the word um and the sunset and everything but what what is skipped over mainly by the well by the boys overtly but not by i'm sure many female viewers is part in the beginning where um the young boys like how 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 much can you write about dying elm trees? And that just really resonated with me because who knows how much of these pages of the diary are filled with metaphors, poems, uh, whatnot about dying elm trees. And we see Cecilia try to take her life, eventually end up doing it successfully. And it's just like, this may have been some sort of warning or just some sort of expression of feelings that we, we were never able to, unfortunately. Um, gain access to but then they search they they look for keyword keywords to find anything that's interesting to them keyword to them because obviously i would find the elm dying the dying elm trees um funny but to these little boys that's not what they want to see they want to see uh, lux obsessing over a boy writing his initials and his name on her underwear that's what prompts this whole montage which we see with unicorns which just like screams romanticism romanticism mysticism and it's just like you can't hide it at this point and then later on once they're done reading it the the narrator as an older man so he's no longer a boy anymore he's now an adult he's been through life he's supposed to be mature but he says this and i quote because of reading the diary we felt the imprisonment of being a girl the way it made your mind active and dreamy, and how you ended up knowing what colors go together. 
So I went ahead and bolded imprisonment of being a girl and also knowing what colors go together because I just don't feel like that's the best indication of the imprisonment of being a girl. Reading your diary didn't show you what it's like to be a girl. And it definitely didn't if you if you think being a girl um, all falls on to knowing what colors go together. Obviously, it does help to know what colors go together, but that's not at all what these girls are struggling with. And I mean, the dying elm trees speak for themselves. They're depressed and they can't leave them, ha- leave them, ha- leave their houses. And that eventually leads to their death. The final thing I wanted to talk about. Oh my gosh. Shut up. Final thing I wanted to talk about is Trip Fontaine and why I hate this man. So Trip Fontaine, if we see in this picture here, um, behind my head, him and Lux here. Basically, we have this slow burn relationship between him and Lux. She's the only girl that doesn't fall right into his arms, and he loves that. That's interesting to him. He loves the chase. He ends up saying that verbatim. She's the only one that didn't make it easy. That should speak for itself. What do you like about her, that it's hard to get her? Hmm. Anyways, she's very aloof. She's like, mm, you'll never get me. And then she finally, he finally catches him. He finally catches her. They go to prom together, and they, she ends up losing her virginity to him on the football field during prom. Here is what he has to say after ditching her. They fall asleep together on the football field. He leaves her there. She wakes up alone in the morning. I walked home alone that night. I didn't care how she got home. It was weird. I mean, I liked her. I liked her a lot. But out there on the field, it was just different then. That was the last time I saw her. You know, most people will never taste that kind of love. LOL. Uh, What is this kind of love? trip i would like to know that sorry about that um let me contain myself it it angers me a lot so basically he ditches her but then goes on to say i don't know why i why i left her and then goes on to say that he's never had a love like that so it's like what was this love and do you not realize at this point how it wasn't okay it's like it's it's This movie is hard because we see these boys at a young age and them grown up and they still look at these girls like they're fairies, but they're not. They're extremely depressed girls who took their lives and it's not something to be sugarcoated. It's really sad. So I wanted to end. Why? Okay. I wanted to end this presentation with this quote from the boys. We knew that they knew everything about us and that we could not fathom them at all. And I think that pretty much sums this all up. I blabbered my mouth off because this is something I'm really passionate about. I love this movie. Watch it. It's on Amazon Prime. But yeah, these girls spoke to the boys maybe once in passing and they, I'm sure, could, could read them to filth more than they ever could it's clear the way they see these women is is very telling of basically the ideal woman in their mind a sexual nymphette in a way that's what it boils down to and it's a shame because they're more than that and no one ever sees it but I see it. I got you, Lisbon girls. And hopefully you guys will see it too after watching this. So um, thanks. Bye.